All I know is he called on the phone, and I wasn't here in person. I picked up the message, and uh, I got a hold of a few other people to hold you up in prayer. And I'm going to let you take it from there. Step right in here. Well, this is a tough thing because I mentioned this once before in church that uh, I joined the fire company in Springville just because uh, the Lord won me. I don't know. Uh, it's been eight, nine months now. Uh, and every time they know that I'm a Christian because they have this brunch once a month on Sunday. I flat refuse in this church. I told them all, I told them in the meeting, uh, church is my number one priority. These other things, I, I agree with what they're doing, I, I'm wholehearted with it, but I'll come in early, work that, but I'm going to church. But this went on, and, and of course, the pastor's been preaching. There's a time to open your mouth, time to keep your mouth shut, and all along the Lord is saying, shut your mouth, keep it shut. Just give the example. Live your life like a Christian should live your life. And just don't get into an argument, basically. But uh, this went on this whole time. And uh, there's one person that I was drawn to. Uh, he was a New Yorker that moved in up here 10 years ago. And he's tough. He's the toughest nut there is in that whole firehouse. And uh, and I've even prayed to ask the Lord, couldn't you pick out a different <laughs> I've never done this before. I've never heard of this before. Where you're sent somewhere to actually do something. And, you know, the clouds didn't open up and the lightning didn't come down. But it's the Lord's telling me. I mean, I'm pressed to go there. I don't have a choice in this. But... Uh, and, and I've never done, I've never talked to anybody about salvation, not ever, my whole life. So this is all new, and this is way out of my <laughs> I got there, and uh, we were at a nursing home fire last week in uh, Montrose, the uh, Gracious Living. And this buddy and myself were at the fire engine, running through the pumps and that, and all of a sudden he says, my... I said, Jim, let's get your coat off and take a look, see what's going on. He says, well, these are suspenders. He's pulling on it, and the Holy Spirit told me right there, he's having a bad heart attack right now. It's bad, bad. And he's standing there, and I told him, I said, Jim, you're having a bad heart attack. Really bad. He said, no, nah, get out of here. I said, no, 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 we're going to the command center for that's handling this situation. And getting you looked at. So I got him over there, the command center basically looked at Jim and he says, what's going on? He says, nothing. It's so, it's so, he's nuts. He thinks I'm having a heart attack. I said, you are having a heart attack. And I told the other guy, I'm not a doctor, but he's having a heart attack. I know it. <coughs> and he went, yeah, well, we don't have an ambulance. All the ambulances are being used to haul the old people out of the nursing home. And so finally I said, look, you've got to get a an ambulance for him. He's got to be checked out. And they set him in the back of this ambulance that came in, and they put the stickers on him, run an EKG, and then they started screaming, get out of the way, close the doors, and it was lights and sirens out of there. And we got in our fire truck and drove it to Montrose Hospital, and we went in there and uh, waited and waited. And the emergency room doctor came out and said, uh, if he wouldn't have gotten here as fast as he did, he'd be dead. It's that close. If he'd be dead. He had to have morphine and nitro to keep the thing going. And he wouldn't have made it. So from there, I went to, uh, they took me to a regional. And then I found out that our president of the fire department uh, also had a heart attack. He was in CMC, and this guy went to regional. And, uh, so I went to the, the, the hospital the next day to see him. And uh, they were going to do uh, stents and stuff like that. He had a blockage, uh, two of them. And uh, so when they got in there to do the stent, they couldn't do the stent. It was beyond that. And uh, he had to have open heart surgery. Uh, it was so bad. So they uh, cut him open. Well, I went to visit him. And I tried to talk him at this point. Now the Lord's pressing me to 
it's time. <laughs> and uh, so I talked to him and he turned me down. And uh, I just couldn't imagine it. I went home. <clears throat> I really was devastated. I stopped to see the pastor because I thought, well, maybe my testimony wasn't good enough. You know, you never think about that part of it. You always think it's the other guy's fault. But, you know, what if it's yours? So, but uh, later that night, uh, the Lord pressed on me well, in my dreams that the, uh, the thing about the rich man, this guy is a rich man, and uh, the camel trying to pass through the eye of the needle, and that's what came to me. And uh, the next morning he went to surgery, and uh, I called him. His wife, when he was supposed to be out, like an hour later, and uh, she said, "No, they're still in there." She said, "He's still being operated on." They said that everything's going okay, but it's just taking longer than they thought. And uh, they, uh, uh, she said, "But she said, I do need to tell you that Jimmy and I both knelt down and accepted the Lord." You're not nobody to us. Amen. <laughs> 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 <laughs>